Hey folks, this is Bardic Dragoon. Welcome back to Let's Play Castlevania Circle of the Moon. So when we last left off, we had wandered through the underground warehouse. Not exactly the funnest experience I've had, but nah, it'll it it, it works mostly. I don't know. Uh, okay, that's my one. Okay. So anyway, since we spent all that time wandering, yeah, wandering the underground warehouse, that means that we are now ready to face the boss of said underground warehouse. And who is that boss, you might ask? Well, uh, let's get into the door and see. Also, turn that on. And yes, that boss is one of the staples of Castlevania, Death himself. And honestly, he's not that hard of a boss fight. Ow. The first stage, because of course there are two stages, it's a later game boss, that's, that's a thing. The first stage pretty much just floats around letting its summoned sides attack you. And that's pretty much it. The only, only thing you really need to worry about those sides, because if you don't have a good barrier, then yeah, they can get a little annoying really quickly. And of course... He also has a handful of attacks that can end up causing problems. Well, not really. They're fairly easy to dodge. Alright, and then he goes to a second stage. I'm not sure why, I went, why I'm opening the pod menu. There's no point to that. And in the second stage, he still summons the sides, but he moves less, which leaves him very susceptible to a constant barrage of crosses and then he dies and in dying he gets sucked into a black hole for some reason really I have no I really have like almost no idea what the heck just happened here so let's just keep going and kind of pretend that didn't happen also Let's pick up some extra stuff, including experience for killing this rock golem. There we go. HP max increase. Huzzah! And the cleansing. Cleanses specified bodies of water so that they are safe to traverse. I think, if I remember correctly, there's only one body of water that you can cleanse. But that body of water is one that we need to spend some time traveling through in a couple of moments. So, we're just going to go with it. Ow. And actually, where is... You're the one I want, right? Yep, okay, that's the one that increases heart pickups. But yeah. I suppose I probably it isn't exactly the best idea to sit here and kind of kill these things, but eh. For the most part, they're not that hard to kill. This Golem, though, he has a lot of health. He also poses almost absolutely no threat to us. I don't even think this actually has any attack. He just walks forward and, you know, he runs into you, whatever. Or, worse yet, if you attack him, he falls on you. I think the damage is the same either way, but... You know, having something fall on top of you because you killed, you broke its legs, it's kind of embarrassing. I mean, it's like a severe lack of foresight and planning on that one. And, come on, die. There we go. Alrighty, let's... Nope. Go back to here. We are not using, we are not exploiting glitches in this one. Not that there's really much, as far as I'm aware, as far as like major glitches in the game. But there's one that can actually be very useful. And basically what that glitch does, it essentially allows you to use any spell in the game. Regardless of whether you have the DSS card, you really only just need to get one working DSS combo. Oh. I almost forgot to my equipment back the way that it's supposed to be for the purpose of 
racking up lots of sweet loot or something like that. Hey, and I think, yeah, it's only a small heart. Okay, and so now that we've taken the quick way out of the underground warehouse, let's... Okay, heart mega. That's nice. really should not try to hold back sneezes. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, yeah, I'm going the right way. But yeah, since we've gotten the cleansing, we can now go into the underground waterway, right? That's where we're going? Yeah, underground waterway. Which, of course, is, a des is the next destination to get to actually, essentially, the last thing we'll need to open... Well, not the last thing. There is one more thing, because there's actually two more bosses and thus two more things to unlock. Though the next one is the last power we'll get. The After that, it's uh, the only thing we get basically is the key to Dracula's cap, to the door that Dracula's hiding behind. And yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, I don't need that save point. Okay, and so now... We use the cleansing to cleanse the water. That was exciting. Something. Okay, and actually... Eh, we'll keep this going for now. And yeah, there's just water here. That's... Honestly, though, not that big of a deal. There are some areas where it's kind of hard to avoid going into the water. But in theory, I suppose you could get to this place as soon as you break all the statues after beating all Drummerk. There we go. That was supposed to be a jump, not a step forward. Alright, well, this is going swimmingly. Mostly because of my own incompetence, but still. It should be pointed out, this is not going well. And, okay, there we go. Now we can proceed forward some more. Okay, and then it's up here. Get that switch. Actually, no. There are a lot of areas, because there's these platforms, because, yeah. You don't really spend a lot of time underwater, which isn't really a bad thing. And being underwater isn't bad, per se. It just, it, there's nothing really to being underwater in this game. Wow. Okay, I jumped too early. Um... go. Okay. Okay, there we go. Man, I really hope that one of the ice armors drops the DSS card it has. But their DSS card is really useful, especially for this area of the game. Okay, and please let me remember what I'm doing. Okay, yes, I do remember what I'm doing. That's always a good feeling, knowing what you're doing. Or dancing on the ceiling, that's another good feeling, I suppose. Curses. Why is no one dropping the DSS card? But yeah, the DSS card they drop, I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head, of course. But it ba it's an action card, and what it does is it basically makes you immune to damage associated with the... Oh no, it's an ability card that makes you immune to damage associated with the attribute that you equip with essentially attacks from said attribute. Uh, Mercury's nerf, that's it. 
basically not affect or not doing damage to you. You'll still suffer, you know, knockback and all those uh, nice handy things like that. But for the most part, I think this is. But for the most part, it, you know, like you still take knockback and it will basically take a certain amount of MP for every hit you take. But, for example, in this case I could combine it with Serpent and that would actually... I think it's really not worth the bonus. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go with this. But yeah, you know, if I combine it with Serpent, it basically makes all of the, like, 90% of the attacks that enemies will throw to in this area completely ineffective. Which is, of course, a great thing. You know, if you're looking to avoid getting damaged, which yeah, is kind of a useful thing to do, I suppose. Okay, now we just run towards the exit. Avoid running into enemies while we're running to the exit, but run to the... By the way, the ice spears have hitboxes even when they're charging them and before they throw them. Good thing to know. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, go to the exit so that way we can hit this switch and then backtrack to get the to the last uh, hidden room here. Oh, not really. Well, it's sort of hidden. It's it's complicated. That's how it works, basically. Why is no one dropping the card? But yeah, we've got a room because well, I'll open the map in a moment here when I'm done fighting this ice armor. You'll notice there's a doorway on the uh, right side of this, uh, left side of this room. It's not a hidden doorway, but there's a hidden room behind that doorway. Though it's hidden in a unique way, given the way that everything else, as far as hidden doors, exists in this game. But, we first, of course, have to get to it. And, okay, yeah, we're on the right track. There we go. Come on. I really should have jumped. There we go. Cause yeah, first things first, well, first things first, there's another ice armor here. But, there's also just a hollow wall. You don't have to break it, you don't have to do anything, you're just a hollow wall there. And also an HP max increase. Ha <laughs> Killing without swinging my weapon once. That's fun. Actually, it's kind of tedious and boring, but, you know, we'll pretend it was fun. But yeah, it's actually... Because, yeah, as I said, the ice armor really should not have stood up. <laughs> but yeah, because, I mean, the enemies here really aren't that threatening, to be honest. Their damage output isn't that bad. Ah, unless they... Uh, hit you while you're frozen, which like every attack in this game will freeze you. But now we've got Neptune Serpent, which as proof of concept, look what that did. It did nothing. I lost MP. My MP that is constantly refilling itself, always. I lost a little bit of that. That was all. And now I'm functionally invincible for the rest of this area. There are a few things that don't do ice-based damage, and... They're kind of a pain to fight, but I am now invincible, essentially, and invincibility feels good. Okay. I mean, I don't know what else invincibility could feel like other than good, but you know, invincibility feels good. Oh, by the way, in case you haven't figured it out by now, the uh, Word of the day is Switch Puzzles, and they aren't even terribly deep Switch Puzzles. So let's face it, it's not like the game had all that much to go for it on the box pushing puzzles from the underground warehouse, so I guess we shouldn't be surprised. Because really, the whole concept of these being puzzles, at least the box pushing puzzles, had some puzzle element to them. This one, you literally go to the one switch you can reach, and you pull it, and that opens the door, and basically that allows you to proceed to the next area. 
the only exception being that a couple of essentially optional areas can't be reached unless like you flip a switch in the next room in which case it's as simple as flipping the first switch you come across in said room and ta-da you found your way through Ow. so yeah I mean it's not like you know unbearable or anything like that no oh. I already do a good chunk of this game or this area we're like at about the halfway point by now And yeah, that witch is probably like the one thing that doesn't do uh, ice-based damage in this area. I think the squids might not as well, but I've never bothered to check. I also don't particularly care. Hell. However, the fish, even though there's nothing watery about them other than the fact that they live in water, the fish do do uh, ice-based damage, or water-based damage, however you want to feel it. And now we run into fish heads, and I can finally answer for myself the question, what do fish heads do in those moments when they aren't drinking cappuccino in Italian caf or in Italian restaurants with oriental women? Because that's something that is, I've pondered for many an age. They apparently also carry chain mail, which is kind of weird, because I was told really fish heads don't do much of anything. They don't, they don't look good in sweaters, you don't need to pay to take them to the theater, um, but I wish I could remember more of that song. I, I, I really just wanted to go off on a complete riff of that song when I saw those enemies, but I can't remember the song. Oh, I got the important part about the cappuccino in Italian restaurants with Oriental women. Can't ask for more than that. Alright, and an MP max increase, because, eh, why not? Honest, well, actually, I guess MP totals are kind of important in this game. Arguably more important is your intelligence stat, mostly because the intelligence stat essentially determines your functional MP, essentially how much MP you... I hate water physics! <laughs> because it kind of points out that there is a delay after your normal jump when you can actually trigger the second jump. It's a very slight delay, admittedly, but there is a delay nonetheless. And... How are we... We are here... Okay. So this room, yes, is what I thought it was. A save point that we will not be saving at. However, we will be topping off our health, because fighting witches takes a lot out of us, even if fighting nothing else in this area does. I suppose something has to pose a challenge. Especially since I think this is like the only area in the game that really exploiting the Neptune card is really feasible. I think they mix up the damage types in most other areas of the game. I could be wrong though. Uh, it's honestly not something I've ever put much thought into. Oh no, they hit me! Whatever will I do? Oh no! Oh, the horror, the horror, blah blah blah. Yeah, the fun thing about this ability, actually, I mean, other than the fact that, you know, as I said, you're kind of functionally invincible, uh, skins. That you're more or less functionally invincible. Is the fact that the way it handles it. Ascent the attacks don't actually damage your MP. What they're actually doing, as I said, is just taking a set amount of MP. So no matter how much damage the attack does, it still has this. It still takes the same amount of MP. Magic gauntlet. Yeah, that was not worth going down there for. And that's kind of awesome in a lot of ways. Okay, so yeah, the octopus, that's what I figured. Since they had kind of an electric looking barrier around them, I figured they did electric damage, but now I've learned. They, well, I suppose I can't prove they do electrical damage. I suppose if I did, like, equip Thunderbird with Neptune, that would prove that, but anyway, as I was saying. Uh, but I proved that they don't do ice damage, so that's them and the witches. 
Oh, actually, we run into some uh, lizard men later on, too. So that's another thing that doesn't do ice damage in this area. Actually, there are a lot of things that don't do ice damage in this area, I'm beginning to realize. Though the important thing is that the majority of enemies that you see, because, I mean, the witches, literally that room we were just fighting them in is the only room that they show up in in the underground waterway here. It might even be the only ca only place they show up in the castle, though I could be wrong on that one. Oh, hey, a potion. Don't mind if I do. And then, uh, yeah, the squids, well, this little octopi squid, whatever those things are, are a little more common in this area than the witches. I mean, they're in this room and the next one. But, yeah, they still aren't all that common. They're also not terribly strong either, let's face it. The only thing that really has a large number of them, and they're still, low, they're still restricted to one room in this area, but there is an enemy that has, there's a large number of them that show up in that area. And that's, we'll come across near the end of the area, some lizard men. But to be honest, the lizard men are not that hard to deal with. They're, they're actually an enemy at... Oh, did we see them? I don't think it was the underground warehouse. I think it was the underground gallery. It's occurring to me, there's a lot of underground stuff here. But yeah. We actually came across them in the underground gallery, and they weren't overly powerful enemies then, so... They aren't, like, you know, one-hit kill weak, but they aren't terribly strong for, you know, enemies in this stage of the game. If I remember correctly. Actually, no, because I think we only ran into one in the underground gallery. And I remember them being in the underground gallery. I just remember, like, were there a lot of them or not. I don't remember. Also, this witch is annoying me. This is a real witch right here, you know? Just being a real witch. And, yes, creativity and humor, I, I have that. Or something. Okay, ma MP max increase again. And, yeah, we want to go this way. Which requires... Oh, that switch I just passed. There we go. Okay, you only need to hit that switch in order to go backwards. That switch otherwise has no purpose. I forgot about that. Because to actually proceed, you need to leave that switch unswitched. Or off. There we go. Alright. Then we gotta hit that switch in order to get actually make any progress in the next room. I suppose that is a bit more of a puzzle in the switching and the fact that you're going to have to kind of think against the grain of what it's been the game has been telling you to do in order to proceed. So I guess that's a thing to consider. Okay, and You know, there is one downside to this whole invincibility thing. It does arguably make you a lazier player. Just because, like, if you don't have to worry about taking damage from hits, you'd stop thinking about it. And, you know, like, it could have long-term consequences if you get lazy about not dodging hits. And then, like, you're in a situation where you aren't invincible like that. I don't know. I suppose there's something I'm trying to say here, but I can't coherently think of what it is. I really don't care. I'm working my way through the underground waterway. And I'm invincible for the most part, so, you know, whatever. I'll live with it. I, I can live with being invincible. No, face the right way and attack. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Alright. Oh, also the siren. I forgot the siren was in here. Of course, the sirens are also not terribly strong. Really, the main advantage of this is the fact that the majority of enemies, the frozen saved and the ice armors, are water, or their attacks are water and ice based. 
you another magic gauntlet. And then also the most powerful enemies in this area also are ice-based. And I think we're actually about to run into one of them now. And... Yep, there he is. The Ice Demon. And it's actually really good that it takes a set amount of MP. Because this guy is actually really hard to deal with. And, well, we're nearing the end of this area. And we're going to have to fight right through two of these things in order to get some secret, or pick up some upgrades. The first one will, after we fight these lizard men, which aren't terribly strong. Oh, hey, their attacks are ice-based too. I did not know that. I would not have figured them to be ice-based. They're lizards. Lizard reptiles and ice tend to be, like, ice magic is super, is effective against lizards in so many RPGs than really just games in general, but yeah. Hmm. But as I was saying, we have to fight multiple of those ice demons. And yeah, you see what they do. They create a meteor swarm of giant chunks of ice. And yeah, I'm not going to say mostly because I don't keep track of those kind of things, but how many times uh, attempting to record this that ended up failing because those guys are jerks. Ah, you stupid harpy. Because, yeah, they have a relatively hard to dodge attack, mostly in the fact they just fill the screen with objects, and... I mean, if you're really good at timing double jumps, I guess you can avoid it, but... I'm not. So, yeah. And their attacks hurt. And, I mean, by this point, you know, as I said, we're near the end of our excursion today. So, yeah, you'll be in pretty bad shape to start, and then this thing will just wreck you. Especially if you're trying to attack it and dodge at the same time, because it's all going to require precise and intelligent jumping. I'm also hoping these lizards will drop something. Because these lizards are one of the two things in the game, the other one being axe armors, that can drop the, I believe it's the Mandragora card. Which, I guess isn't like a great card, but it does provide one pretty good bonus uh, when you pair it with Venus. Right, yeah, Venus is the one that boosts stats. Because Venus Mandragora gives a boost to your luck, i.e. a boost to the enemy drop rates, and thus to your chance of picking up items. Which is good, because... We're going to want to have lots of healing items for one of the challenges we're going to be facing this game. It's probably not for a ways off. Ow. Still surprises me that their attacks are considered water or... Well, maybe that's... I guess not really ice technically. I guess it's water. I don't know. I mean, it gives... When you look at the other thing that Serpent does, it gives you a freezing whip and a barrier of ice. So, I guess it kind of is ice-based. I don't know, I'm curious. I'm probably going to have to go and do some research after we're done here. But in the meantime, let's just... mercilessly flail at these lizards and hope we kill them. Or not, I don't know. Ooh! Yeah, Mandragora, Mandragora! Okay, and in here... Okay, down... Okay. And... Venus, Mandragora! Look at that! Boosted luck! Go and there we go. Okay. Ta-da! Save point. Okay. Well, this is a good run. So yeah, we got two new DSS cards and one that's really useful for here and one that's just really useful in general. So I guess tune in next time where we take on another boss fight 
and start digging into the final stages of exploring this castle. Until then, as always, later folks!